flowing planes, they look better and they kind of uh, give a little contrast to the body. If you notice the grain that's in this paint job, uh, that's off the reflection off the trees. That's how deep this paint job is. My name is Greg Copas out of Berced. Uh, I've known Craig for 25 to 30 years. Uh, he's probably striped uh, between 10 to 15 cars for me. Uh, we have done some flame jobs for me on bikes and stuff like that. When I used to build hot rods, he did all about hot cars, hot rods. Uh, I got back into bikes, uh, wanted something different to run around town. Uh, Craig came up with this ideal with uh, this Road King that I got, uh, painted it and I've won a lot of awards and stuff with it. One thing that's really amazing that, uh, uh, that turns me on to Craig more than all the other pinstripers around is how fine the lines he does on cars, motorcycles, stuff like that. His lines are so fine, they're just really dramatic. Okay, I'd like for you to look at this Harley Davidson I did out of Merced for uh, Greg Copas. You'll see the graphics and the striping on that bike. This, that bike's won a lot of awards, and I want you to look at the paint job on that. Okay, here's some script that I wrote out here with the Stabila pencil. Uh, this is the quill brush that you're going to be lettering with, and this is a freehand script that I kind of drew out here. Use your left hand for a prop, and just kind of relax, and take your brush and push it down, and just kind of make it thin. This is some stuff that I drew out that's kind of thick on the other end, too, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. There's all kinds of script. This is just one that I kind of like that I drew out. Uh, just relax with your left hand as your prop. And uh, just pull these lines where your chalk, where your little Stabilo pencil is. And like I said, this Stabilo pencil will wipe off since this dries with a little bit of Windex and water. Start at the top, bring it down, and twist the brush. Twist it, twist it, and then come up with it. And it takes a little practice. You want your, you want your hands to cramp a little bit because if your hands are cramping, you know you're doing it right. Bring it to the top and twist it and pull it up. You're, you're taking that brush and you're, you're twisting it in your fingers. Just kind of relax. Pull it and lift it up, and lift it up, and don't worry about it because if you make a mistake, you can wipe it right, wipe it off. Now, see, I'm coming down, just I'm coming down on the on the brush and uh, just relax with it. And start back up at the top again, and just pull it down. Just do some nice script to just to practice with, and then, like I said, there's all kinds of lettering that you can do. There's uh, there's a, a lot of drawing books that you can get and lettering books that you can copy designs from. Uh, you can get these books at any uh, lettering uh, store or uh, uh, a novelty store or a um, arts and crafts place that you can get these. And uh, 
like I said, again, you can take these and you can draw stuff out with them or copy them off and then uh, practice with that. And then pretty soon you'll get pretty good at this lettering. This takes a little practice like the striping. Just bring them down. Make sure everything's tight. You, all want, you want all your ends tight. It's just a practice that you need to do. And like I said, it, just like anything else, it takes a lot of practice. But, uh, like I said, I've been doing this for about 30 years, and uh, I didn't do this overnight. But it, if you want to do something bad enough, you'll learn this. And this is just a nice script. And I figured I'd write out Harley Davidson. Everybody can relate to that. And it shows you the variations of the letters. Just take it down, pull it up, pull it, pull it straight up. Start right back where you where you started at and come down. And uh, that's this eye that I'm making right here. You can come back. I usually dot the I's and the T's and all that stuff later when I get through with the lettering. I come back and dot the I's and the T's. And uh, just bring it, swivel that brush. You want it to swivel. Come up, up, start down. And uh, just practice that and then just come right back up to the top again. Bring it down to your other letter to make your end. It's just a, uh, there you go. Just bring it down. Come back up to the top. Pull it, turn it, turn it, and come straight out. Okay, now just kind of go back and look to make sure everything's tight, all your edges are tight, and uh, dot your eye, come back later and do all that. And, uh, you know, I think it needs a shadow, and uh, the shadow will, will really pop this lettering out. And, you know, you, uh, you want your shadowy, shadowing uh, a lot lighter than the main color. And uh, you just take the same brush, the quill brush, and... Uh, you know, you want the light source, wherever side you want the light source, like the light's over on the left-hand side, you want the shadow to the right-hand side. And you can make it the other way. If you want the light on the right-hand side, your shadow will be on the left-hand side. Um, you just want it really light, just a light color, and it gives it a little depth. And it kind of looks nice. And it really adds a lot to your lettering. And uh, you do it the same way you did the lettering. It's a little easier because you don't have to twist the brush as hard. Just gives a little nice effect here. Just bring it down. And uh, usually every time you do a couple lines, you have to go back and reload your brush back up again. But this is just something you need to practice. And you can do it all kinds of colors. Even an orange would look good behind this, a real light orange or even a light yellow. But I use a lot of gray, and it kind of looks good. So this is just something you need to practice. So um, bring them in. Turn it, and this little stuff, you don't have to load the brush so much. And when you start doing a little longer lines on your lettering, well, you'll have to kind of load the brush up a few more times. But on the smaller stuff, you can do five or six pieces. But you can see how this is coming together now. The, the, the shadow really brings the lettering together. And uh, some of the lettering, some of the hardest lettering that you're going to find out to do is, is uh, square block letters. That's one of the hardest things to do with the brush. But that's something that you really need to practice because that's part of this lettering thing. And uh, block letters, uh, you'll you'll find they're just a little harder to do. But you don't want to use all script in your in your sign work because all script, if you write a, a sign out with all script, is too hard to read. So you want your you want to break the lettering up with a little script and little block letters. So just bring that lettering down. Just bring it start at the top, come down with it. And you don't want it to hit the other color. You're standing away from it about one eighth of an inch. And uh, just bring it down, just like you would your lettering. You're doing the same thing, but it's not quite as hard because you don't have to flip the brush as much. But this is just a nice script that I picked out for you guys to learn learn this little bit of the striping video. This is all comes together. And if you're going to be striping, you're going to have to be lettering too, so this is something you need to, to kind of master. And uh, you just take that brush and just pull it right along. And just, just uh, concentrate on it and relax when you're doing this. You need to relax and breathe. There you go. It's almost finished up here. You can see how it looks. You can see how it gives that little bit of depth to that lettering. And that's just a little thing you need to practice. I like when you look at this red Harley that I did. It has a, a tribal scheme of flames on it. It belongs to Doug Watts out of Merced. And uh, if you like to look at the old time striping on top of the tank.
okay, I've got this paint loaded, this brush loaded up with paint. Uh, again, your left, the flat side of the brush is going to the left. You hold it right above the wrap, and you just take this. These are your fingers. You can hold your steady with your left hand. Just start up. Only the tip of the brush is touching. Come down. Sometimes, every time you stop, you have to reload, just about. And uh, you're making a turn this way, so you want to kind of move your hands, and your prop fingers are going to help you. It's going to keep you steady. Bring it down like that. We got it loaded up again, pinching it like a pencil, holding it like a pencil. Just come down here and do this one. You turn the brush and swivel it. When it turns, you swivel. Keep your edges tight. The point will go right to the where you stop and come right back in again. And you can do all kinds of designs. These are just little practice things that you need to practice. When you turn it, you got to turn the brush. When you, when you turn in like this, you turn the brush, you swivel it. And sometimes you take your brush and load it up a little heavier and make these a little fatter. They kind of look nice. So we'll do it like that. And do the same thing with this one. Fatten these up. Fattens things up. And uh, remember we talked about the quill brush, okay, or outliner. This outliner is good for different things like this. You can throw in a little dot. There's the stuff you need to practice, you know, just things like that. Uh, now remember we talked about the tape. This is, this is a good practice for you. You can do it this way. Just run you some tape down like that. This is going to be your guideline. You want this finger. This finger right here on that tape, that's going to keep you straight. And this takes some practice like anything else. Don't get discouraged because you'll, you'll catch it. You'll get the brush just right. And that tape's going to keep you straight. You can even come back with another color, you know, a contrasting color like an orange, or I use a lot of gray. And you come right back up. Go right beside it. You can either go on this side or this side. It doesn't make any difference. The hardest part is putting two thin lines together. That's the hard part.
design. Um, I made my center here. You can get your center anyway. You can go from here to here to here to there, and you'll find your center. But you can put these designs anywhere, anywhere you think, whenever you want, wherever you want them. And, um, and what you do on these panels, you'll start on one spot. Then you come over to the, to the right, do the same line. One side, and over to the other side. Same thing. Go to your left. And you can make your designs any, any way you want. This is something I sketched out earlier. When you're on this side, you pull a line. When you're on this side, pulling that line, be looking at all your little where you're at here, and you'll you'll. So if you're half like an eighth eighth of an inch up over here, you come over here about an eighth of an inch. If you're out from this line, maybe a half inch. You look at both sides while you're doing it, and it, it kind of keeps you even. And if you make a mistake, don't worry about it because this stuff wipes right off. That's one good thing about one-shot paint. <laughs> 